We have another passing of a wrestler this past uh, weekend, I believe. Um, not going to dwell on this part for too long, but Paro Aguayo Jr. passed away during a tag team match that Rey Mysterio Jr. was involved in. Um, he died of a stroke and heart attack associated with a broken neck. Oof. It took medics about a minute and a half to two minutes to get to the ring. About 50 seconds to get to the ring, about two minutes before the match fully stopped, even though people knew things were happening. Yeah, that's what the weird part about it is. Um, and that's a shame, because Pero Aguayo Jr. is not a nobody. Pero Aguayo Jr. was one of the biggest heels in uh, Mexico. Um, his father wrestled and was well-known. He was very well known. This is not a death of a small time Mexican wrestler. This is a death of someone quite literally on, on the level of, of WWE's top card, a, a Triple H dying. Um, and that just shows that there are quite honestly, very, very real risks that come with wrestling. People like to make fun of it. Uh, people like to say it's fake, but um, the physical physicality of it uh, can lead to injuries and death. What I wanted to talk about more, uh, because it really got me thinking, uh, and and this uh, upset is probably too mild of a word, but I'm just trying not to get work worked up. Um, the way that we handle death and view death in the internet era, because... As soon as Aguayo Jr. passed away, um, people started flooding my Facebook page and my Twitter account. Uh, not with articles, but with videos. And some of these people, you know, if, if there was a video that didn't autoplay attached to an article someone sent me, mm -hmm. they're... They're, I mean, they're, I'm, not, I'm not counting them in this. What I'm talking about is people who actively seek out videos of someone's death and then pass it on. And I think that's fucked. And whether you realize it or not when you are doing it, you have to realize that that's fucked up. And you're fucked up. Why the hell would you send someone a video of another human being's last moments alive just to convey something that you need to say. That's what written articles are for. I don't need to see him being pulled dead out of the ring. I don't need to see his body go fucking lifeless against the ropes. And I certainly don't think it's interesting or amusing. I, there's already people selling black market DVDs of this fucking match. Uh, and, 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 and it, it, it's, it's, it, it disgusts me. And people who do this disgust me. And it's... And I, I feel bad, but because because it's a wrestler that that brought this up to me because it was just it's something that I was inundated with. People know that I am I care about wrestling, but it's the same sort of fucking sickos who hunt down videos of beheadings and shit like that. And I, it, dude, it doesn't make me want to leave the house. Yeah, I, I don't get I don't get that. I, I, well, we can talk about lots of different things. There's there's a whole psychology about people being having a morbid curiosity about death because uh, it is sort of that sort Ugh. of strange frontier that y like y you don't ever witness it up close or usually don't so people don't it's an emotion that uh, to put it simply it's an emotion to see someone die that many people don't experience thankfully um you know and then i think there's a reason why you don't want to experience it uh regularly because it numbs you it desensitizes you um people people say that you know there's studies done um i'm trying to connect this video games a little bit that when people play when people play violent video games um th there's no causation with uh doing acts of violence but there have been studies linking it to desensitizing you to violence and i think that's not just movies though i think it's a culture in general that the more violent imagery you see or experience it means less to you it just, unfortunately it just worries it doesn't, me so much it, that there are people who can't separate a fake person dying and a real person dead against the ropes. I, I think I think what happens is for whatever reason 
you see one, you see two, you get to the point where it doesn't, you, you, you know how you feel sick when you see something die or something? Yeah. That feeling doesn't happen to those people anymore, unfortunately, which is very dangerous. I don't want to know those people. I really don't. Well, it's very dangerous just because um, once you get to that point, there yeah, there is no turning back because, you, uh, and, and it's not something like, oh, you're a goody two-shoes that you, you don't want to watch it. It's not that. It's... It, it's um, it's not just the whole thing about being disrespectful to the to the person involved. It's a, it's to me it's a part of the, your humanity to value. I hate to say it to value life enough that you don't want to see something like that on display. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't want to see the same thing happen during uh, when we were in our, uh, Iraq when Zara Hari was beheading Americans and people and some people was try to spread the link even even saying oh this is what, why we want, want, have to fight these monsters. I still don't want to see. I said yeah. listen, I know someone was horrifically beheaded. I know someone was probably gasping on screen as their fucking, you know, trachea was being cut. They couldn't even scream. I don't, I can picture it in my head enough that I don't need to see it yeah. on film. It, it's horrific enough that I don't want to witness it. And then, you know what? It, it affects you, whether you not like it or not. It's the same thing that if you're, if you're in a war zone and, and uh, I realize the whole time I'm doing this podcast, I've had peanut butter on my shirt while eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, by the way. That's just the whole time. I figured it was blood. Um, but, um, it affects you in this weird sort of a primitive way to experience uh, violence and death like that. And no, I, I mean, I understand the morbid curiosity. I just don't want to be a part of it. I, I just don't want to be a part of it. I just, I just, it's just weird to me. I just, I don't, know? I don't ever want to see someone's fire extinguished in Jesus Christ. Yeah. I waded through so much of that and like it did affect me, but not in a desensitized way. Luckily, I mean it, but it, you got, you got been, you upset. I've been nauseous for a week and a half, and that was not ha that wasn't helping wasn't me. Helping. That yeah. wasn't fucking I, helping. I think that the most I saw of it was, um, you know, it wasn't an automatically playing video, but it was an embed on an article, and you can just see the image was him on the ropes. But I didn't play the video. It's like, just That's, so, yeah, it's it's he's just so obviously gone. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's with anything. I mean, you have unfortunately, you have. I mean, hell, sometimes on Facebook, I see people posting ISIS pictures of like you know head, head, heads on stakes that they're, these fucking animals are doing. You know, and it's just you 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 want to try. You can't always avoid it, but you want to try to avoid it as much as possible, just so that you. I believe you want to keep that shred of uh, some sort of humanity. That I'm afraid that you lose it the more and more you watch this shit, and I truly believe that. Um, and for you in the, in the comment section or listening to this, maybe for you, you're like, oh, you're a pussy. You can't take it. Hey, that's your choice. I don't want to, I don't want to see it. Cause I think to me, I'll lose a, a little piece. I'm not saying this be dramatic. I'm losing a little bit of peace of my soul. Every time I'm seeing something horrific like that. 